G'day everyone, welcome to that other show, the weather. Well, in Australia right now, it's enough to confuse a visitor on what bloody season we're actually in right now. One day it's 40 degrees Celsius and the next it's 20 and it's pissing down with rain. The best part of being a gamer is that both of these kinds of weather are just fine to stay inside with air conditioning and play video games. So on that note, get that climate under control. Snuggle up to some headphones and turn the volume up so you can calmly enjoy the next 20 minutes of my soothing voice. Cue the music. episode 10 of that other show and today is wednesday the 6th of february 2019 i am your host lucas and here with me is an xbox one a playstation 4 a pc a nintendo switch a game boy a wii u a mega drive sega saturn and super nintendo i really do apologize for the ones that i've missed during this show i will be talking about the following anthem crackdown 3 Apex Legends, the Aussie Gamers Experience podcast, Xbox and Nintendo's compatibility, what? And there'll be a that other description. We've only got 20 minutes for the show, so let's get started. Okay, first up on the list, I've got Anthem. Right, so we had the Anthem VIP demo weekend, and I played that, and it was broken connectivity-wise. Starting off for the first few hours uh, when I tried to play it, can't get on. Just infinite loading screens, didn't work. Did a few searches, found out that Xbox was having some issues, while PlayStation 4 and PC were having some issues, but were able to at least get on and play. Xbox took a little while longer to get it all together, but eventually it did. The next day, I played it, because it was available for the weekend, about two weeks ago. And I really fell in love with it. Anthem looked like, well, it looked and felt like the game that I was expecting and hoping. And it is, it is a brilliant game from my, from where I stand anyway. I, I absolutely love uh, the combat mechanics. I love the javelins. The javelins are fantastic. The ability to fly around in a game that's kind of like the Division and Destiny, that's awesome. Destiny had those double jumps that were massive, larger than life. But Anthem just takes it that next step further and actually gives you the ability to fly. Uh, I've made a video. Uh, I'm probably going to like it was like a an overview video, which is on the Aussie Gamers Experience uh, YouTube channel. I'm probably going to go over some of the ground already uh, that I've already stepped on there. But if you haven't, oh, just bear with me. But I won't be harping on too much. Uh, the the amazing uh, flying, as I was just saying. However, it is on a cooldown, but you get a real decent time uh, to actually fly and you can elongate that fly time by flying above water where uh, spray vapor will come up and cool your jets and then you it'll overheat slower or you can literally fly into water or through a waterfall which will instantly recool your jets down to cold and then will start heating up again absolutely amazing mechanics now, it's, it's the kind of game, it's a looter shooter, and uh, your enemies are bullet sponges, so it's going to take a while to take them down, kind of like Destiny and The Division. Uh, however, I do enjoy those kind of games where you can try and uh, mix up how you're attacking to try and get the most damage that you can. You can do combos with teammates, so if they're in the middle of attacking, so say they've used a freeze uh, attack and has frozen the enemy, your attacks will combo with that freeze attack, so it'll be a combination and do extra damage. Amazing. The graphics, visuals, uh, and performance were excellent. I played it on the Xbox One X, and I played it on PC, and they were infallible on both both locations. Uh, Snoogs, he, uh, if you don't know who Snoogs is, host of the Aussie Gamers Experience podcast. I'll plug that at the end of the show. You've got to check it out. He had some serious issues with uh, frame rate drops and poor performance and uh, and dropping out of the game. Now, he's playing on an Xbox One S uh, and had issues. Uh, would have been interesting to see had his connection at his end 
uh, been tested on, say, PC or something like that, but I don't think he tried it on PC, but had some issues there. So there are definitely some connectivity issues, and I am really worried about Anthem's launch day. I think it's going to be broken as all hell. And this is coming from someone like me. I absolutely love Anthem, and I think it's going to be amazing. But the connectivity issues are there. And uh, I fear that they are going to be there ever present because of its popularity uh, on day one. So I'm forecasting that on day one, I'm probably not even going to be able to play it. That is unforgivable. That will be a test. And I will be massively pissed off because I will be picking this up day one because I'm excited. It it can be a faux pas. Uh, I have pre-ordered the game. However, I'm excited for it. It's a it's a thing that we do these days, and uh, I, I did it. You can rouse on me in the the comments down below if you wish. But uh, yeah, so uh, Anthem has has ticked all the right boxes except for the connectivity part. I think the online's going to suck to start off with. But in giving it a little bit of rope, look, uh, the other big looter shooters, Destiny Division, they were both horrid on launch and during their beta testing. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. One thing I also want to address is um, uh, particular... Oh, no. No, I won't address that. I've said it now. I probably should. Are you going to get the shits if I don't and I just move on? All right, just, just quickly. The hate that Anthem is getting uh, because of its uh, links with EA. Yeah, all right. EA, EA are, are rubbish. They've done some shit things in the past. But I've got, I've got faith in Bioware. I loved Andromeda. Everybody else hated Andromeda. I loved Andromeda. But I've got faith in, in Anthem being a good game. And I'm just hoping, yes, that EA don't ruin it. And uh, it's also coming at a bad time with an established looter shooter, The Division, coming uh, what, a week after the launch. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. But I'm in. I'm in. Balls and all. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, Crackdown 3. Now, I've also released a video for this one on the Aussie Gamers Experience YouTube channel. That's a really cool video. Uh, really excited to talk to Joseph Statton and uh, Jorg. Oh, I forgot Jorg's last name. Sorry, Jorg. Uh, it says it in the video. I did remember it for the video because I had it written down there. I don't have it written down here. Sorry. But anyway, I spoke with two of the development team, part of the, the the dev team, and they told me all about Crackdown 3. I answered a whole bunch of questions that uh, Uncle Chant gave to me as well as uh, Skrill from our Discord channel. If you want to get all interactive with this show and the Age Experience show, you've got to get onto our Discord channel. We also have a Facebook page. I've got to stress the the Discord channel, though. It is a laugh. All right, so Crackdown 3. Now, my experience, I've played the campaign. I never played any of the previous uh, uh, Crackdown games, so I don't really have an... I'm not an authority on it, but I wasn't a fan of the campaign gameplay. It felt kind of old school, uh, old, clunky. It it just didn't feel like fun to me. So I'm not going to harp on that too much. It's it's a beautiful game in 4K. It plays wonderful and fans will probably love it. What I'm more interested in is the multiplayer. Man, that that multiplayer was actually really fun. I only got to play one map, so I'd like to see what more maps there are. Uh, But uh, I really enjoyed it. Now, it's a a lock-on fest. So it's an an aimbot or an auto-aim sort of uh, style game where everyone can lock on to everyone. But the, the, the fun to it is the verticality, jumping up and down, running behind buildings, hiding, breaking line of sight so that lock-on doesn't work, and uh, destroying buildings to go through them because people are hiding on the other side of them, and, uh, and the just larger-than-life explosions and destruction is really good fun. And I feel like somebody that may not be the greatest at online games can become quite good at this style of game because of that aimbot. Uh, if you, you're not the, the a crack shot with controller and stuff like that, you, you, you should still be able to land shots on this one. So I'm really excited for uh, Crackdown 3's multiplayer. Uh, but the single player, I don't even know if I'll touch it really. It is co-op, so I probably will play it co-op with some people that might want to play it. Um, but that, that, that multiplayer is where I'm at. Uh, heads up, February 15th. 
So about a week from now, it's available day one on Game Pass. So if you're a Game Pass subscriber, you will get access to the full game and the multiplayer all inclusive. All right, if you've got any questions about, well, questions about my Anthem comments, questions about Crackdown 3, just leave them in the comment section down below. If you listen to this on Apple Podcasts, then uh, please leave us a five-star review and or go across to our Discord channel or YouTube channel, find the video and put your comments in there. Thank you. Moving on. All right, big one, Apex Legends. Now, I have just finished, just before I'm recording this show, just finished making my video for Apex Legends. It's only a short one, so I'll try and maybe elaborate a little bit more on this one. If you want to see the video, head across to the Aussie Gamers Experience YouTube channel. All right, so uh, it's a Battle royal game. Kind of has the DNA from Overwatch, PUBG, and Fortnite, and Blackout, and all that sort of stuff. And it's created by Respawn Interactive, which are the people that made Titanfall. And we've just recently heard that Titanfall 3 is not being developed. And probably in its place is Apex Legends. And this is a free-to-play game. Uh, no purchases necessary. However, just like all free-to-play games, there are a ton of... Of, well, I'm just going to call them transactions because no, they're not micro anymore. These micro transactions, I'm doing the uh, speech bubble bunny ears thing here. These micro transactions are no longer micro. I don't think I've seen an actual micro transaction in years. These are just full blown purchases. $20 uh, for a, a skin. Well, that, I'm, I'm talking about, say, uh, Fortnite. You pay, pay 20 bucks, 15, 20 dollars. Like that. It's, it's preposterous for a skin. But anyway, that's how they make money, because it's free to play, and it's totally optional, and doesn't affect gameplay. So I give it a pass there. It looks like Apex Legends is going to be the same. There are uh, things that are currently available for you to purchase. I played it just last night, which was, I think, the first day that it came out. The The store is there, but you can't buy um, the uh, premium currency just yet well you couldn't last night i don't know about today so uh that that'll be coming soon so what it is it's uh three player squads so it's only three players i was a bit disappointed about that i would have expected at least four six would have been so good but three is the lucky number because it's a 60 player battle royale with 20 squads and uh basically you go in just like any other uh, Battle Royale, you fly in in an airship and then you drop out of the ship. Really cool point of difference here is that it will select a player at the start of uh, the match who will be the jump master. And the jump master is the person who controls when you jump. And they will also control all three characters as you go down to the ground. However, it doesn't take it all away from you. If you don't want to go with the jump master, you can jump whenever you want and you can break away at any point from jumping to landing. So you have that option. But it's a good thing to be able to keep your squad together because sometimes it's hard in those other games to stay together because you're falling fast and you can sometimes spread out. But this new mechanic, jump master, will keep your whole squad together. You can land right next to each other. Or if you don't want to, you can break off. So that, that's really cool. Now, there's fast looting. You hit the ground and you run. And uh, you go and find as much armor and guns as you can. But the thing is, the guns are scarce. There are so many. So if you take too long to land, uh, you, you're going to find stuff already looted. Uh, and the other people near you will have the weapons and you won't. It's, uh, it's, it's easy enough to find a pistol, but the pistols are shit. You want to get yourself an assault rifle and a shotgun or something like that. But if you're just stuck with a shotgun, you've got no range. If you're me and you don't have skills, you're going to be screwed. So that's hard, but it's part of the challenge. Uh, I've really enjoyed my time in Apex. I've only played it one night, but I played it from dead on 8.30 p.m. till about 1 a.m. in the morning. So thank you very much to Radicus. And Azrael as well. Cheers for joining me playing that game. It was awesome. Snoogs was going to join, but for some reason his Xbox was bitching out and wouldn't download fast enough. It took him all night to download it, and it's downloaded now, so we'll have to catch up for a game later. Uh, but uh, look, it, it's a it's a fantastic game. You, adding new things on, on top of 
uh, what we're all used to in these battle royales. I like the fact that you have the ability to revive. So not just a normal, okay, I'm down, revive me. Okay, that's in it. That's normal. We've seen that before. But I'm downed and I've been killed. You still have an opportunity to bring your player back. When, when, when you die, so when I die, and it happens quite a lot, you go down, you leave a crate behind which has all of your gear in it. Now, other players can loot that, or your teammates can go and take your player name off the top. It's kind of like a little tablet thing or a banner. I think it's called a banner. They take your banner off the top of it, and they can run that to a respawn point. Okay, and these are these little devices. They look like sort of... Uh, things and you take it to that and it takes a while i don't i can't remember the timing exactly how long it takes might be eight or 12 seconds but if they persist and take the banner back to there wait the time and don't get killed in the meantime you will then respawn in a jump ship and you will you will respawn directly above that spawn point and you'll free fall again issue is if there are enemies around you're going to land without any gear because you have to quickly go and scramble and get your gear back but if you've got good teammates like uh, 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 uh officer ling uh he will drop a weapon on the spawn point so when you land boom grab a gun and some ammo and away you go so that's good teamwork good on your uncle ling uncle ling <laughs> officer ling you're a uh, you're, a, you're a, a treasure a treasure to a team even though you played like shit last night Alrighty, well look, there is, uh, there's a lot to talk about with Apex Legends and no doubt uh, Snoogs, Gredge and Rem uh, may be touching on that on uh, one of their ep upcoming episodes of the Aussie Gamers Experience podcast. So on that note, let's go into the next topic. Okay, this one is about the Aussie Gamers Experience podcast. It's coming back for 2019 well we always knew it was coming back but it's coming back soon the episode has already been recorded it's already been edited i've already made a mockery of some of the things in there by being editing lucas and uh had a good time with it it's a good show bloody excellent show i should say unfortunately rem couldn't be there but gredge and snoogs Mate, they brought it home. First episode, 244 for 2019, will be available this coming Sunday. Let me just get the date. It is the 10th of February, 2019. Episode 244 coming to everything. iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all of them. You could just Google it and it'll go nuts. So there you go. That's coming very, very soon. All right, we better. I've got, I'm running out of time a little bit here, so let's uh, let's move on. Okay, the next one I've got here is Xbox and Nintendo's compatibility. What? 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 What, what? what is this about? I've got a, a Game Informer thingy up on my computer screen at the moment. Uh, saying that a GDC 2019 session listing reveals that Microsoft is preparing to announce an Xbox Live cross-platform development kit to connect players between iOS, Android, and Switch, in addition to Xbox, and any game in the Microsoft Store on, on Windows PC. So that's going to allow gamers, apparently, to uh, get get achievements while playing games on other platforms which is blowing my mind. So apparently you're going to have access to your achievements, your friends list, uh, all that sort of stuff, which is um, pretty bloody impressive. So, uh, and it says here, obviously, prior to, to now, um, Microsoft has previously supported cross-platform functionality for Minecraft on Switch, Fortnite, Rocket League, all of that sort of stuff. But now they're going to be branching out to maybe even bigger games. People have speculated this might mean games like Mario, first-party Nintendo games coming across the Xbox. I, I, I don't know if that will happen. I don't think it will. I mean, it's not impossible. The, I didn't really think that what I'm talking about right now would have been possible, but it's happening. Microsoft and Nintendo are shaking hands, and this is a cool thing. I asked the question on Twitter the other day, is this the move that crushes the opposition in the next generation? had a comment coming back, I think it was Uncle Chunt, who said, I don't think it's going to crush them, but it's bloody well going to help them or assist them. That's a, that's a paraphrasing from what he actually said. But um, I think it's moving in the right direction. 
you know, the, with the likes of Sony and the PlayStation having massive IPs like Horizon Zero Dawn, I'm sure there'll be a two being made right now, and The Last of Us Part Two, Uncharted series with all those big titles, God of War. Uh, I'm pretty sure they probably won't get crushed, but it's bloody looking very, very good for Microsoft and Nintendo. I'm very impressed. So this is really cool. That, that That's some amazing, amazing news that is really settling for a gamer like me. What do you think? Comments down below. Alrighty, we're uh, finishing up now, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, so we've got that other description. If you don't know yet and haven't listened to the other episodes that I've made, that other description is a game that we're going to play. Okay, so here is where I read out a description of a game and I'm going to leave out crucial details and you, the listener, have to work out what game I'm talking about. If you know it, post it on Discord or tweet at me or something like that and uh, I'll let you know if you're right. There's a link to Discord and Twitter in the show notes. All right, so let's get going. All right, this is a video game franchise catering on a series of high-speed platform games. The protagonist is an anthropomorphic colourful creature. I think that's how you say that word. Typically, you must stop the antagonist's plans for world domination, often helped by your friends. The first game was released in 1991 and was conceived after its home team requested a mascot character to compete with other popular mascots out there. Its success spawned many sequels and helped the creators to become one of the leading video game companies during the 16-bit era of the early 1990s. The first major 3D version of the game was released in 1998. Spin-offs have explored other genres, including racing games and sports games. That is that other description. If you think you know what it is, as I said, go across to Discord or tweet at me. I will tell you if you are correct. Right, yo, let's close the show. First up, go and give us a review if you can. You can review this podcast on iTunes, or you can head across to our website, www.theagexp.com. Had to think about it for a sec there, because it's new. There's links in the descriptions. You don't have to remember this stuff. Uh, and you can leave us a re- review on our website. Now, an overall review, it's not, it won't be specifically for anything that we do, but just for us. We'd like to get as many reviews as we can. That would be great. All right. Well, that's it for this episode of That Other Show. And if there isn't enough content in this show, then you absolutely need to go and check out the Aussie Gamers Experience video game podcast, which is hosted by Snoogs, Rem, and Greggio. Check out the links in the description down below, up above, left and right, wherever it is. And you can also just search for the Aussie Gamers Experience on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and a ton more other places as well. That's it. Catch you all next time, whenever that is. And until then, I am Lucas, and I will see you. <laughs>